The Woman in the Woods One cold, dark October night, Ivo Hugh was returning from the quarry with some trucks. It had been a busy day and the young engine was looking forward to arresting the sheds. It was a dark and cold night. As Ivo Hugh jumped through the night, he couldn't help but feeling a bit nervous. He had rarely been out at night, but on this night particularly, it was darker than usual. Through the line going past Crosney Current Station, there was a small patch of woods at the left side of the line. As he rolled along the foresty line, he started getting a strange feeling, as though he was being watched. Suddenly, a loud scream echoed through the forest, followed by a gunshot. What was that? exclaimed Ivo, scared. I don't know, but that clearly sounded like a gunshot. Ivo's driver halted the train. and he and the farmer went to look what was going on. A couple of minutes later, they shortly returned after. Did you two find anything? asked Ivo Hugh, who was still shaken up over the ordeal. Well, no, we didn't find anything. Not a single person, said his driver. But, but I heard, and you heard it too, said Ivo. It must have been something, right? I don't know, said Ivo's fireman. But I think it's better that we inform the police about this when we get to the sheds. Ivo's crew climbed back on, and the red engine rolled away with nothing more than confusion and fear in his smoke box. The next morning, Ivo was still thinking about the events of last night. Scarlowe noticed he was a bit pale. What's the matter, Ivo? he asked. You look as if you saw a ghost. Actually, I think I somewhat did, said Ivo. A ghost? asked Peter Sam. Ivo, what are you talking about? Ivo proceeded to tell Scarlowe and Peter Sam what happened last night. Did this really happen to you? asked Scarlowe. Yes, it did. Scarlowe's face fell as he sighed mournfully. <sighs> Poor old Miss Monroe, he said sadly. Scarlowe, what's wrong? asked Peter Sam, who was now more confused than ever. Scarlowe took a deep sigh and explained. <sighs> what Ivo may have encountered is something that I've tried to forget for many years. What? asked Peter Sam and Ivo, intrigued. With another heavy sigh, Scarlowe began his tale. <sighs> many years ago, when the railway was being opened, there lived a woman named Elizabeth Munro. She was a very liked person throughout the community at the time. She was also an extremely nice lady to me and Reneus. Whenever we passed by her house, she would always weave at us. And when we would get the chance, we would have small talks with her. She was a truly wonderful friend. However, all of that changed one night. Scarlowe paused. One very dark October night, I was coming home from the quarry. Passing through the foresty area of Crosnai Curran, when I heard a loud scream, a scream from Ms. Monroe, and then a loud gunshot. My driver ran out of my cab to see what was going on. When he came back, his face was as white as the snow. There he graphically told me that Elizabeth was dead, 
Apparently, she was taking a stroll through the woods when a man who, from what we were told, wasn't mentally stable. He jumped at her from the trees and shot her. I felt awful for her. Me and Reneus almost couldn't do our jobs the next morning because of the shock and sadness of the whole ordeal. The man was caught by police a few days later and sentenced to life behind bars. And now, every year on the date of our untimely death, Ms. Monroe roams the woods again, living her final moments over and over again. Ivo, Hugh, and Peter Sam were speechless. Oh, oh my scar, Louis. I'm so sorry, said Peter Sam, feeling bad for his friend. Don't pity me, youngster, said Scar Louis. You're not to blame. D do you think that's what I encountered? asked Ivo, now more scared than before. I'm not saying it was, replied Scar Louis. But considering today is October, and it was on a night like this that Miss Monroe passed away, would you consider that a possibility? Well, I... Oh, don't give me that rubbish, said Duncan, who had been listening to the whole thing since he woke up. Ghosts don't exist, and I highly doubt a ghost of someone who died in the woods would still be here. For Christ's sakes, Duncan, show some sympathy! Snapped Peter Sam. Someone who was barely close to Scarlow and Reneus died because of the acts of someone else. And you're saying it's rubbish? Well, if you want to imagine the supernatural, then do so. But you're not fooling me with a woman in the woods. And he popped away to get his first train. Just ignore him, Scarlow, said Peter Sam. It's not that I'm worried about, said Scarlowy. For the rest of the day, Duncan couldn't stop thinking about Scarlowy's story. A wandering ghost indeed. Hm. Scarlowy must be going senile. There's no such thing as ghosts. That afternoon, Duncan was readying to return home. He had to take a load of slate trucks to Crobin's Gate, but the winch wasn't working, so taking the trucks up the incline was taking more time than it should. Hurry up! grumbled Duncan. If I don't go now, Sir Handler should have taken my favorite place in the sheds. I'm sorry, old boy, but we can't go until all the trucks are loaded, said his driver. Unknown to him. Duncan began to get more and more nervous as the sun began to go down. When night fell, they were finally able to leave. <whistles> About bloody time! Duncan groaned as he rolled away. The night was cold and dark. Duncan was going at a fast rate to get home quickly. Come on, come on, come on, said Duncan as he thundered down the line. Steady, boy, warned his driver. I don't need you trying to knock me out of the cab.
as they sped through Boston current forest. There came a loud crack! Duncan's driver slammed on the brakes and the train came to a stop. What the hell is it? No! yelled out Duncan. One of your wheel tires has come loose, said his driver. And with how you were traveling, I'm not surprised this happened, scolded the fireman. Well, don't just sit there. Go get help! Duncan's crew were not back to cross the current station, while the guards set detonators along the line, leaving Duncan alone. Oh, well, I might as well get some sleep. And Duncan did fall asleep, but not for long. Soon after he closed his eyes, he heard footsteps running. He opened one eye. Who's there? He yawned. No reply came. Who is out there? He yelled. As he did this, a woman walked out of the tree line and looked at Duncan. Duncan froze as he looked back at the woman. She was dressed in old-fashioned clothes and looked as if she was hiding from someone. Then she looked back and ran back into the woods. No sooner had the woman left Duncan, a man also came out of the tree line. He looked at Duncan with a cold and almost insane stare, and he was holding something in one hand. A gun. Duncan froze in fear. Then the man ran back into the woods. Duncan looked on in horror as he heard the same scream from the woman, only to be abruptly cut short by a gunshot. Duncan then screamed in fright. It's Ivo Hughes' ghost! He yelled in a panic. He shut his eyes and refused to open them until the sun arose. Early the next morning, Rusty came to take Duncan to the works. The little diesel saw his friend was very pale. Duncan, are you alright? Duncan opened his eyes. It was daylight. Oh, yeah, I'm fine, Rusty, he said sleepily. Rusty didn't ask any further as he dragged Duncan to the sheds. He then looked at Ivo and said, Hey, Ivo? Hmm? Yes? I just want to say that if you come across Scarloe, tell him I'm sorry for not believing him, and sorry if I sounded rude to you yesterday. Oh, sure thing, Duncan. Ivo's guard's whistle blew, and the red narrow gauge engine puffed away with his morning train. As Duncan was shunted into the works to get his wheel tire mended, he looked over at Scarloe. The red engine didn't even need it to ask. He knew what Duncan had saw, and he hoped he learned his lesson. Ivo, Hugh, and Duncan changed after that. Though none of them were psychologically affected by the incident, they hadn't forgotten about Scarloe's story. And so, whenever they pass the Crossley Curran Forest Line, they always hold a moment of silence for Elizabeth Monroe, the woman in the woods.